The intercom on Roger's desk buzzed softly, interrupting the cerebral symphony of his thoughts. He glanced at the digital clock on the wall, it was a quarter past seven. The lab should have been empty, save for the soft whispers of machinery and the occasional footfall of the night staff. Roger's curiosity was piqued. Roger's assistant, a young woman with a pangshang for punctuality and an impeccable bob, announced in a hushed tone, Mr. Rogers, there's an agent Pierce here to see you. He says it's urgent. Roger's eyes narrowed slightly, his mind racing. He had not been expecting any visitors, especially not from the government. He stood from his chair, smoothing the wrinkles from his impeccable suit and approached the secure glass doors leading to the reception area. The man who awaited him was a study in contrasts, his tailored black suit and crisp white shirt a stark counterpoint to the scantily clad women accompanying him. Agent Pierce's piercing blue eyes met Rogers with a gaze that was as direct as it was unsettling. Good evening, Mr. Rogers, he began, extending a firm hand, I apologize for the intrusion, but time is of the essence. My name is Agent Pierce, and I represent an organization with a keen interest in your recent research. We've been monitoring your work, and frankly, we're quite impressed. The potential applications are, extensive. His smile was tight, hinting at the gravity of his words. He took a moment to survey the lab, his eyes lingering on the rows of biohazard containers and the holographic screens displaying complex DNA sequences. I'd like to discuss a proposition with you. One that could change the course of human history and potentially, your own. Rogers studied Agent Pierce's outstretched hand for a moment before taking it in his own firm grip, feeling the calloused strength that belied his own scientific dexterity. The government has taken an interest in my research before, but never with such urgency, he replied, his voice cool and measured. He stepped back, gesturing for the agent to follow him into the more private sanctum of his office. Please, come in. The room was dimly lit, the only sound the muted symphony of his orchid sanctuary. What exactly is it that you wish to discuss? He knew better than to underestimate the significance of this visit, especially given the cloak and dagger aura that clung to the man like a second skin. Agent Pierce's eyes swept over the office, noticing the juxtaposition of antique books and cutting-edge technology. He took a seat across from Rogers, his gaze never wavering. Your work on the rapid mutation of biological agents, Mr. Rogers, he said, placing a sleek, black briefcase on the table between them. We need your help for a project of national security. Rogers leaned back in his chair, his expression contemplative. The scent of orchids filled the air as he steepled his fingers, considering the implications of such an offer. I'm intrigued, Agent Pierce, he said slowly, but my expertise is in healing, not harming. Agent Pierce's gaze remained steady, his eyes seemingly reading the very fabric of the room, as he spoke, the line between the two is often blurred, Mr. Rogers. Our adversaries are not bound by the same moral constraints as we are. Sometimes, to prevent greater suffering, one must engage in actions that may seem questionable. His tone was even, but the intensity behind his words was palpable. Your research holds the key to a biological defense system that could protect our nation from the unthinkable. The potential to save lives is immeasurable. The alternative, he paused, is to leave it in the hands of those who would not hesitate to use it as a weapon. Rogers's office, a bastion of order and intellect, seemed to hold its breath as the gravity of Agent Pierce's words sank in. The glow from the holographic screens cast a soft blue light on his face, accentuating the lines of contemplation as he considered the offer. He knew his research could be used for nefarious purposes, had even wrestled with the ethical dilemma in his own mind. But to have it presented so starkly by a man who clearly knew the darker side of human nature was sobering. He leaned forward, elbows on the desk, his eyes never leaving the agents. You speak of defense, but history is littered with the consequences of unchecked power. How do I know your intentions are pure? Agent Pierce's smile remained, but his eyes grew more intense. He leaned back in his chair, his hand drifting to the briefcase. You don't, he said frankly, but I can offer you something no one else can, the resources to ensure your research is used for the greater good, and the protection of those who matter most to you. He popped open the case, revealing a dossier filled with classified information and a data chip. The choice is yours, Mr. Rogers. Will you stand on the sidelines, 
Or will you join us in shaping the future of our world? Rogers felt his heart rate quicken as he stared at the briefcase. The data chip glinted under the soft light, beckoning him to dive into a world of secrets and power. He knew he was being tempted with a dangerous offer, but the thought of his research saving countless lives was a siren's call he couldn't ignore. What kind of protection are we talking about? He asked, his voice a whisper of suspicion. Agent Pierce leaned in slightly, his voice dropping to match the intimate tone of the conversation. The kind that ensures your family's safety, Mr. Rogers. The kind that guarantees the anonymity of your employees and the security of your operations. The kind that makes it so that no one, not even the most resourceful of adversaries, can touch you or those you care about. His hand hovered over the data chip, a silent offer. But more than that, you would be working alongside the best and brightest in the field. Your research would not only be funded but also prioritized. And, if necessary, we have the power to intervene should your work be threatened by those who do not share our moral compass. Rogers's eyes flicked from the data chip to Agent Pierce's unwavering gaze. The mention of his family and employees sent a jolt of concern through him. He knew the dangers of his work, but had always strived to keep them at bay from his personal life. The promise of protection was tempting, yet he couldn't ignore the nagging doubt. He cleared his throat, his voice steady despite the tumult of emotions within. And what would you have me do, exactly? What is the nature of this national security project? Agent Pierce's smile grew thinner, the corners of his eyes crinkling slightly. He reached for the data chip, his thumb hovering over it as if to emphasize its significance. Mr. Rogers, imagine a world where our planet is not the only host to life. A world where a cosmic entity, ancient and powerful, has seeded its offspring within the Earth's core, and these beings are now gestating, threatening to emerge and remake the world in their image. His voice was low, imbued with a gravity that seemed to suck the air from the room. Our intelligence suggests these, organisms, are preparing to hatch, to burrow through the Earth's crust and unleash havoc the likes of which we've never seen. Your expertise is vital in creating a countermeasure, a vaccine, a weapon if you will, to neutralize this threat before it can destroy everything we hold dear. He slid the chip across the desk. In this scenario, the line between healing and harming becomes indistinguishable. It's about ensuring humanity's survival. Rogers felt his heart thud in his chest as he stared at the data chip, his mind racing with the implications of what Agent Pierce had just revealed. The very idea of alien life forms gestating within Earth's core was the stuff of science fiction, yet the seriousness in the agent's demeanor suggested otherwise. He swiped the chip off the desk, his mind racing. This, this is incredible, he murmured, his voice a mix of disbelief and fascination. What evidence do you have to support this, claim? Agent Pierce's expression remained stoic as he reached into his pocket and produced a small, sleek device, which he placed on the desk. This, he said, tapping the device, contains classified data from our Deep Earth probes. The seismic activity, the genetic samples we've gathered from deep beneath the surface, it all points to something otherworldly. Our scientists have been working around the clock to understand the nature of this threat. We believe these entities are dormant, waiting for the right conditions to emerge. The changes in Earth's magnetic field over the past decade suggest those conditions are rapidly approaching. His eyes bore into Rogers. We need you, Mr. Rogers. Your expertise in biotechnology is unparalleled. You're our best hope for creating a countermeasure before it's too late. Rogers's hand hovered over the device, his mind racing. The idea of alien life forms gestating in Earth's core was as terrifying as it was fascinating. He thought of the implications, the chaos such a revelation would bring. Yet, he couldn't shake the feeling that this was more than a mere hypothetical scenario. The agent's words painted a picture of a world on the brink of an extinction-level event, and he was being asked to play a pivotal role in averting it. The weight of the responsibility was immense, but he felt a spark of excitement in his chest. Here was a challenge that could test the very limits of his intellect, a chance to leave an indelible mark on history. All right, Agent Pierce, he said, his voice firm, I'll need to see this evidence for myself. But if what you're saying is true, then we must proceed with the utmost caution. The office door glides open, 
interrupting the intense silence that had settled between Rogers and Agent Pierce. A young woman with a manner of fiery red hair steps in, her movements as graceful as the orchids that populate the room. Her eyes, a stark contrast to her hair, are a soft hazel, filled with curiosity as she regards the unexpected guest. Mr. Rogers, I apologize for the intrusion, she says, her voice a melodious lilt, but it's your usual time for a break. Would either of you care for some coffee? She holds a silver tray with two steaming cups, the aroma of freshly brewed dark roast wafting through the air. Her gaze flits to the data device and the briefcase, her curiosity piqued. Rogers's assistant, her name was Lila, had a habit of appearing precisely when she was least expected and most needed. Her timing was impeccable, a trait that had earned her a place in his inner circle despite her relatively junior position. The interruption was welcome, a momentary reprieve from the gravity of the conversation. Rogers nodded, his gaze never leaving Agent Pierce's. Thank you, Lila. That would be excellent, he said, his voice steady despite the racing thoughts. Lila's eyes flicked between the two men, noticing the tension that seemed to have thickened the very air in the room. She set the tray down on a side table, the clink of porcelain a stark contrast to the quiet hum of the lab beyond. Her hands moved with the precision of a dancer as she offered the steaming cups, one to Rogers, the other to Agent Pierce. Is there anything else you need, Mr. Rogers? She inquired, her voice a gentle whisper. Rogers' eyes remained on the agent, a silent question in his gaze. No, Lila. Thank you. That'll be all for now, he replied, his voice a tapestry of calm and authority. As the door closed behind her, the tension grew thicker than the steam rising from the coffee cups. Rogers took a moment to appreciate the aromatic brew, the warmth in his hands grounding him amidst the surreal conversation. He raised his cup to his lips, the dark liquid a comforting warmth against his palate. Your evidence, Agent Pierce, he said, setting the cup down with a gentle clink. I need to see it. I can't make a decision without understanding the full scope of what we're facing. Agent Pierce studied Rogers, the silence stretching taut as the seconds ticked by. Finally, with a curt nod, he reached into his briefcase and extracted a thin, encrypted tablet. He slid it across the desk, his gaze unwavering. You'll find everything you need to know on there, he said. But I must insist on a condition of your own. This information cannot leave this room, and your involvement must remain strictly confidential. The future of humanity rests on the line of our discretion. Rogers's eyes followed the tablet as it glided towards him, the weight of its secrets as palpable as the cool metal beneath his fingertips. He picked it up, the device feeling almost alive with the promise of knowledge. Understood, he murmured, swiping the screen to life. The encrypted tablet was a treasure trove of information, a labyrinth of classified documents and encrypted files that painted a chilling picture. Seismic readings spiked in areas previously thought to be stable, genetic sequences that defied terrestrial classification, and satellite images that seemed to show an unnatural pattern of bioluminescence deep within the ocean's abyss. His heart raced as he scrolled through the data, his mind racing with the implications of what he was seeing. He glanced up at Agent Pierce, his eyes reflecting the flicker of the holographic screens. This, this is, unprecedented. His voice was a hoarse whisper. Rogers's fingertips danced over the smooth surface of the tablet, accessing encrypted file after encrypted file. The data was overwhelming, satellite images of unexplained bioluminescence in the ocean's deepest trenches, seismic readings that spiked in bizarre patterns, and genetic sequences that bore no resemblance to any known terrestrial life. His mind reeled, trying to process the implications of what he was seeing. He took a sip of the now lukewarm coffee, his eyes never leaving the screen. The complexity of these organisms, he murmured, it's as if they were designed to thrive in conditions we never thought possible. He paused, his gaze shifting to Agent Pierce, who sat across from him, his expression unreadable. What do we know about their intentions? Agent Pierce leaned back in his chair, his eyes never leaving Rogers. Our analysts have been working around the clock to decipher any patterns of behavior, but the truth is, we're in uncharted waters. These beings have been dormant for millennia, their purposes are as enigmatic as their existence. All we know is that when they awaken, the consequences for our planet will be, profound. 
He took a sip of his own coffee, the silence between them as thick as the aroma of the brew. But we have one advantage, the element of surprise. If we can develop a countermeasure before they emerge, we might stand a chance.